record this. Okay. So question number one, I got, she gave us a booklet type of different chapters with MCQs. Do you guys have questions and answers of immunity? If chapter immunity, pathogens and immunity. They are saying that you guys got, yeah, oh, okay. Okay, it's okay. Today we'll do these questions and then uh, later on, we will do the ones that you are talking about. Okay, okay. Let me share my screen with you because I, I got pictures of these questions. You guys can keep your eyes on the book. They're the same questions, but I just took pictures because it's easier and I don't need to uh, point out to anything particular. So let's use this. Okay, complete, copy and complete these sentences. A micro, and you can use the chat window to answer the questions, okay? Use chat window to answer the questions because that's way, that, that way it's easier and it's faster. A microorganism that make a person ill is called a, a microorganism that make a person ill is called a dash. Come on, be fast, 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 so that we can do more questions. Yeah, but it shows. Oh, it doesn't show? Okay. Yes, good job, good job, good job. Okay, let's move on. Some, some types of bacteria, dash, dash, and dash are pathogens. What are the, yes, protoctis, viruses, and fungi. Are you, are you guys um, using the answers at the back or do you understand? Now this, this table, I don't know if I, yes, I discussed this yesterday in my class. These are the four classes of pathogens which damage our tissues and which usually um, invade our bodies. And these are viruses, bacteria, protoctists, and fungi, and they are in the order of frequency. This is how frequently they uh, infect us. Viruses number one, followed by bacteria, followed by protoctists, and fungi. Yes, okay. Protoctists are, you know, uh, single cell to double celled organisms which affect our bo bodies. And then fungi are, they have a, a, a particular structure which is different from others. Okay, viruses, by the way, also. I don't know if I should talk about their structures. Their structure, the detailed structure is in some other chapter. Okay, but just one thing that I would like to mention here is that viruses are um, just made up of proteins. Proteins and maybe another group of molecules called nucleic acids, uh, which by the way is the same material of which our nuclear material is made of. Right, they are, they are something in between living and non-living. Like scientists have you know, argued a lot whether to classify them as living and non-living. The only thing that makes them living is that they can reproduce once they are in the host. Once they are in the host, they can reproduce. That's the only thing that makes them living. Otherwise, they are non-living. And that is why they require a host because they do not have all that machinery, all that apparatus required for reproduction. So they get all, all of that from the host once they invade the host. And then they have all the machinery for reproduction. Okay. Okay, then... Uh, let's move on. Some pathogens can get into the body in food and drink. The stomach produces dash. Very good job, Yusra. Yes, good job, Hiba. Good job, Myra. Okay, which helps to destroy uh, these. The skin has a thick layer of dash that stops most pathogens getting into it. The skin has a thick layer of, yes, dead cells as well as the protein keratin. Okay, yesterday, this is the word I was uh, trying to remember. and collagen came out of my mouth. It wasn't collagen, it's keratin. Yes, dead cells and keratin that makes skin impenetrable. Okay, that stops most pathogens getting into it. However, if the skin is cut, pathogens may enter the blood. Blood dash helps to prevent this. Yes, it's clot, not mucus. Yusra, mucus is a sticky fluid found in our respiratory passages. We're talking about the skin. If the skin cuts, if the skin is cut open and the blood is exposed, then it is the blood clot. Okay, blood clot is made up of the fibrin network, platelets. Okay, fibrin network, uh, fibrin network and platelets basically. 
Okay, many of the pathogens that are present in the air that we breathe in are prevented from reaching the lungs because they are trapped by sticky, yes. Now comes the mucus in the respiratory passages. So good job. Magic mucus. Yes. Uh, Okay, match each of the following terms with its description. Okay, okay. Resistance to infection by a particular pathogen obtained by having the disease or being injected with a weakened pathogen. This is, yes, active immunity. Good job. Okay, uh, part B. Resistance to infection by a particular pathogen obtained by acquiring antibodies from another organism. Yes, passive immunity, yes. The antibodies are made in some other organism and so you got prepared antibodies. Chemicals on the outer surface of a pathogen that are recognized as foreign by lymphocytes. These are antigens, yes, good job. Is there any person who is not understanding the answers? There are many participants who, who do not participate, who are not answering. Uh, if there is any question, please let me know through the chat window. Okay? Okay. Um, a type of white blood cell that ingests and digests bacteria. Yes. Phagocyte. Yes. Macrophages. Macrophage is the name of the white blood cell. You will, you will use the word macrophage is more preferable. Phagocytes can be other uh, cells as well. Remember I told you we have, a, we have a lot of phagocytes, macrophages, one type of phagocyte. A type of white blood cell that produces antibodies is lymphocyte, a long-lived cell produced by the division of activated lymphocytes. Yes, memory cells, yes. Long-lived cell produce, yes. A long-lasting type of immunity. Long-lasting is active immunity, yes. Long-lasting is active immunity, a protein produced by lymphocytes which attaches to a specific antigen, antibody, right? Okay, an investigation was carried out into the changes in concentration of antibody molecules in blood of two people. Person R was given passive immunity and person S was given active immunity. The concentration of antibody molecules in their blood is shown in the graph on the next page. Let me share the screen, maybe that would be easier. Okay. Okay, this. Define the term antibody. Define the term antibody. Who will define? Is a protein produced by lymphocytes in response to the presence of a foreign substance? Antibodies are capable of binding with high specificity to an antigen. Okay, yes, good job. Chemicals secreted by the lymphocytes, which attach to the antigens and help destroy them. Yes, talk about their specificity. Okay, and yes, the rest of, of the points are there. And talk about them being proteins. Okay, and a specific. Right, okay. Now explain why the concentration of antibody molecules shown in the graph decreased to zero in person R by day 90. Uh, Ibrahim, yes, your answer is close, but it's not complete. Explain why the concentration of antibody molecules shown in the graph decreased to zero in person R by day 90. Why doesn't it last long, Saad Aslam? Why? Yes, that's because the antibodies eventually break down because they haven't been stimulated to make clones. See, when you are using they, they, I don't know what do you mean by they. In the first day is antibody. See, when you write a scientific answer, you have to be a little more specific. You will say that's because antibodies eventually break down and because, because the, the, uh, the lymphocytes haven't been stimulated to make memory cells. Antibodies have not made memory cells. Antibodies don't make memory cells. Memory cells are made by the stimulation of the, of the lymphocytes by the antigens, right? So you will say 
that uh, uh, the reason why person R has zero antibodies by day 90 is because by day 90, all the antibodies have been broken down. And uh, since the lymphocytes were not activated, so there are no memory cells to produce more antibodies, right? Okay, part three. Explain why the concentration of antibody molecules shown in the graph for person S did not start to increase until 10 days after the injection. Yes, it takes time for the lymphocytes. Yes, it takes time for the lymphocytes to first of all recognize the antigen, then get activated, and then they will make clones, they will multiply, and then those clones should also produce enough antibodies. Enough meaning enough to produce a response, right? So yes, uh, all of that. Lymphocytes require time to recognize and then get activated and then multiply. And then those clones will um, require time to produce enough antibodies, which will be enough for the pathogen. Okay, part B, breast milk contains antibodies which are absorbed by the baby. The antibodies give the baby immunity to the diseases to which the mother is immune. State the type of immunity that the baby has a, as a result of absorbing the mother's antibodies. Yes, passive. Yes, definitely. Why? Because the baby is getting the antibodies directly from the mother without the baby's own lymphocytes getting activated. Right, question number four. These questions are about the graph in figure 10.16 on page 136. Now, I want you to look at that graph, 10.16 on page 136. Suggest reasons. No, describe the incidence of measles cases in the USA between 1944 and 1964. So part one is asking you to describe the graph. Is it a simple increase? Is it a simple increase? Is this a simple increase? You have to describe this. How will you describe this? It, 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 this is not simple increase. Okay, you have to be more specific, not just fluctuation. Yeah, wrap. yes, you are close. Uh, let me see, Saad Amir, yes, you are close, but be more specific than this. People were not vaccinated, so it increased rapidly and then slowed down. See, first of all, now you are explaining, you are answering, Yusra, you are trying to answer the second part. This, this, this reasoning will come in part B. Part A is just description of the graph. You will tell the reason. Yes, Ibrahim, you have to tell year by year, exactly, yes. You have to be like, don't go into too many, too much detail, but also be specific. So that's the trick of writing a scientific answer. That's the trick. You have to be concise, you have to be short, and you also have to be specific and to the point. So what you will see if you, oh, I don't have a, okay, can I have this, okay. If you look at it closely, almost, almost, the trend is, the trend is that uh, the number of cases is rising one year, following the next year, then rising the next year, then, you know, with some, uh, with some uh, exceptions, again, downfall then rising again the next year, and so on and so forth. So roughly it's up and down one year in alternate years. So it's rising, followed by a rapid drop, and then rising again, and then rapid drop, and then rising again, year by year, okay? Every year it, it, it's this way. So you have to describe this, that the incidence of, the num the incidence of measles is, rises one year, followed by rapid drop in the number of cases in the following year. And this continues from 1944 till almost 1964. Right, yes. And to be precise, uh, yeah, it's almost 1964. Yeah, 1963, you can say. Yeah, okay. And then you will suggest reason. Now why? Suggest reasons for the patterns you have described in your answer to A. 
So they are not immune. So why does the number of cases decreases? Okay, we understand the increase because there is no vaccination. Yes, yes. So you guys are giving me answers in bits and pieces. You know, one person is giving me one part of the answer. The other person is giving me the other part. So you have to uh, organize your answer. Okay, you have to compose your answer and make sure that you are uh, specifying all the important points. So what you will say, you will first of all explain the decrease in the number of cases, which is easy. You can, uh, sorry, the rise in number of cases, which is easy. And the rise in number of cases is due to the lack of vaccination. And because the uh, lymphocytes of people uh, have never been exposed to this virus maybe before. And so they are not activated. They do not have the required memory cells and therefore uh, they do not have the required antibodies and therefore they are not immune and therefore the number of uh, measles rises. And then when the number of cases increases, they eventually uh, do produce antibodies. They eventually do acquire memory. And so a large portion of the population gets immune. And so the immune people uh, buffer. They act as buffer and therefore they prevent the uh, passing on of infection from the infected to the uninfected, meaning I'm talking about the herd immunity. I'm talking about the herd immunity. And, or in simple words, you can just mention what this book mentioned, that if at least 93% of the population is immunized, the people who are not immune are also protected against the infection. So just manipulate this piece of information in your own words and according to the question. You know, that's the trick of answering questions of IGCSE. The trick is whatever information, whatever knowledge you have, manipulate it according to the question and use scientific terms and be careful of the keywords that the examiner is looking for, right? So once the uh, number of immune people in the population is above almost 90%, then even the, the other people who are not immune get protected because not many people can pass the infection on, right? And you can just write down herd immunity. If you write herd immunity, I think the examiner will be pleased. Okay, describe the effect of the introduction of vaccination on the number of measles cases. Yes, now this is easy. Once you vaccinated, the number uh, uh, most of the people then had the required antibodies in their blood and therefore the virus could not breed uh, within the uh, vaccinated uh, hosts and therefore uh, a drop in the number of cases of measles so much so that it reached zero by 1994. Right. Okay, describe the, okay, it, oh yeah. Explain why the vaccination of around 90% of a population can protect 100% of the population from an infectious disease. Now, this is the same, herd immunity. Okay, this is herd immunity. And the explanation will be the same, that if 90% of the people of the population are vaccinated, then uh, uh, there are not a lot of hosts within which the virus can reproduce, and therefore, uh, the number of incidents of viral infection decreases. This is just another description of herd immunity. Right, yes. Okay. Is there anybody who did not understand? Because I am going fast, thinking that you, all of you are with me and all of you are understanding me. And But if there is any person, even a single person who needs any extra explanation or any point is not clear, please let me know and stop me. Mm, okay. Okay, let me move on. Okay, question number, okay, good. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, then question number five. Copy and complete the table to indicate the type of immunity, active or passive, that is obtained by each method. Having a disease and recovering from it, active, good job. Feeding a baby on breast milk, passive, good job. Uh, being injected with antibodies, passive. Receiving a measles vaccination as a child, 
Yes. Okay, remember the word vaccination, the word vaccine usually uh, in, uh, indicates a weakened or a dead pathogen, okay? Meaning that if somebody is injected uh, with antibodies, we will not call that a vaccine, okay? Injection of antibodies is not called vaccination, usually, okay? I think in the strict sense of the term, Vaccination meaning weakened pathogen, right? Dead pathogen. So always active immunity, vaccination. Okay, an aid worker is asked to travel immediately to a region where a disaster has taken place. There is a high risk of her being exposed to pathogens that could cause serious diseases. Her doctor recommends that she should have an injection of antibodies rather than a vaccination of weakened pathogens before she travels. Explain the reasons for this. Uh, what is the answer of four? What four? You mean question number four? Uh, Ibrahim, yes. A P A. Or what do you mean? I did not understand. Question five, yes. Question number five, part four. Receives a measles vaccination as a child? That's active immunity. Active immunity. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay, Aisha, yes, you are, your answer is a very brief, but yes, it is correct. Passive immunity has a rapid response. So why in her case? Five, one, two, three. Nabil, we did it. Having a disease and recovering from it is what? That is because if she gets a vaccination rather than an injection of antibodies, there will not be enough antibodies in her body to protect her from pathogens. Antibodies will act immediately and won't take time, but the vaccination will activate the WBCs and will take time. Yes, Hala. Yes, Hala, your answer is close. And yes, um, because, you know, she is traveling immediately to a region and uh, she's traveling to a new place. So her lymphocytes uh, are, were never exposed to those pathogens before. So she does not have the required memory cells. And if she waits for uh, the memory cells to be activated and then produce antibodies, it would take longer and she might fall ill in a foreign place where she might not have the health facilities, right? So it is better that she gets antibodies, passive immediate antibodies injection, and she can always renew that, uh, you know, have another injection of antibodies while she's there, right? That would be easier than to fall sick and to get that active immunity. And she doesn't need it in long term. She doesn't need a long-term uh, immunity against those diseases because then she'll be returning back to her own country. So there's no point in taking this risk, right? So you have to write it a scientific way, meaning you have to be brief and to the point, right? You have to be brief and to the point. Uh, in active immunity, you are injected with antibodies, so they will act immediately. No, Atika, in active immunity, you are not injected with antibodies. You are injected with a weakened or a dead pathogen, okay? And so your lymphocytes get activated, and then those activated lymphocytes produce antibodies, right? Yes, yes. And passive immunity is immediate. Passive immunity would not take long, okay? Passive immunity is immediate because it deals with the injection of antibodies, direct injection of antibodies directly into the bloodstream. My voice is cutting, uh, but I'm connected. I'm, I'm fine. I'm connected. My audio is also on. Okay. Okay, is there any other question? She is traveling to a new place and she might face new pathogens which can infect her. So she should have more antibodies. Yeah, but remember, you have to satisfy the question. See, sometimes most of us, what we do is if we know a, a few things about the topic that the question is talking about, we just wrote, write down whatever we know. And, you know, 
by chance it might be satisfying the question, but you have to make a deliberate attempt to see whether you are satisfying the question or not. So in this particular circumstance, you will mention the immediate nature of the situation. Like she needs immunity immediately because she is traveling, okay? And then she is not in a particular need of a long-term immunity, okay? Short-term will do fine with her. And then she can always have another injection of antibodies while she's there. Having an injection is not too hard, right? And then if she waits for the active immunity, she might fall ill and that might be harmful for her. You know, because she does not have the immunity. She does not have the memory cells. So even if she does wait, there is no guarantee that she will have immunity or, you know, her memory cells or she will develop memory cells, right? So you have to talk about all these points. Okay, so with this, uh, it was easy. Jazakallah khairan hala. Uh, no, but, but today we have only talked about, uh, I mean, we only discussed the questions. Okay, there was one point that I forgot to mention because yesterday I tried to finish, uh, get away with, uh, you know, the autoimmune disease as soon as possible because we were running out of time. So I just want to uh, mention a few points regarding type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, which was autoimmune, remember? And I asked you a question, whether whether can we take insulin orally in the form of tablets and then uh, we discussed that no we cannot because if we take it orally the enzymes in the stomach will digest the insulin so digestion now insulin is is a protein is protein in nature now if it gets digested then how does it affect now the job of insulin is to decrease the level of glucose in the blood right and how does it do that? So a little know-how of how insulin works, I won't go into the details, but just a little know-how will help you in understanding why the digestion of insulin will render it ineffective uh, to decrease the level of blood glucose. C. Now, now look at this picture. The pancreas, the beta cells of pancreas are synthesizing or making this hormone insulin, okay? And then the insulin is sitting on this receptor. Now receptors are again, you can think of them as the marker molecules on the surface of cells. And then, you know, basically what insulin does is that it opens the doors of cells and, you know, knocks at them, knocks at their doors and asks them, hey, can you take glucose inside can you please keep these glucose mo mo molecules inside because the level of glucose is going too high in the blood, which is not good. So can you kindly keep these few glucose molecules inside yourself so the blood glucose level can come down, right? So that's, that's what the insulin is trying to do. So this is one of those cells, right? Now the insulin will come and sit on this receptor. Sitting on this receptor will open the other door for glucose, the other gate for glucose. Now, once that gate opens, the glucose molecules can enter into these cells. And so when a lot of cells allow the glucose molecules to enter within them, the level of glucose in the blood goes down. So that's how insulin decreases the level of blood glucose. And usually uh, insulin knocks at the doors of the liver cells. Okay, the liver cells are the ones which, this is another picture, I, I, I liked it. Now you can see the, the yellow cap sort of thing is insulin and this red ball is glucose. So when this insulin acts like a key, it acts like a key and fits into, the, into that purple colored insulin receptor and it unlocks the glucose channel. Now glucose channel is the green, green thing on the membrane of the cell. Now, when the, when the key fits into the door and it unlocks the door, the, glu the door for a glucose molecule opens. And so then the glucose molecules can enter into the cell, right? Now, if insulin gets digested and it loses this shape, 
do you think it will fit into the door or will it fit into this insulin receptor? No, it won't. And if it doesn't fit, do you think it will be able to unlock the door for glucose molecules? No. And so glucose will not be able to enter these cells. And so that is why an insulin molecule, which is digested by the stomach enzymes or by the acid or is, you know, the structure of which is distorted or destroyed in any way uh, by the acids of the stomach, for example, then it won't be able to do this job of allowing glucose within the cells, right? And so it won't be effective. That is why insulin is always taken as injectables intramuscularly. Intramuscularly meaning within, uh, into the muscles, injection into the muscles. And we usually choose that part of the body which has a big chunk of muscles without any major vessels in the surroundings because we don't want to be poking into major vessels. Okay, and another uh, precaution that the uh, diabetic patients, especially type 1 diabetic patients have to take is that they have to be very careful about their diet because uh, their body is not too good in maintaining the blood glucose levels. So, uh, so they should take care that their diet should not uh, rise their blood glucose level immediately. Okay, so they should be eating really healthy. Okay, what was the other thing um, about insulin? And yes, uh, most of the autoimmune diseases, which includes type 1 diabetes, uh, are inborn. Inborn meaning this is due to some genetic problem, right? So it exists since childhood, since birth or since childhood. So yeah, they have to be careful. Not, maybe not all the genetic diseases are since birth. Some are uh, really, really early in childhood. Some begin really in real early childhood, okay? So these were the points that I forgot to mention yesterday regarding type 1 diabetes mellitus, which was autoimmune disease. Now, now, end of chapter questions are done, but I got these CD questions. These questions I got from the CD. Okay, now click on the correct answer to each question. What term describes any organism that causes diseases? This is easy. What term describes any organism that causes diseases? Bacterium, microorganism, pathogen, virus. Okay. Pathogen. Good job. Yes. Pathogen. Yes. Now, you know, I have to move back and forth between Zoom and my screen sharing. So please bear with me. Which is an example of a transmissible disease? Diabetes, heart attack, influenza, scurvy. Yes, yes, good job. Yes, influenza. See, whenever the question asks you to uh, pinpoint a transmissible disease, the transmissible diseases usually will be uh, caused by the uh, organisms which belong to those four classes. What were those four classes? Viruses, bacteria, protoctists, and fungi. So it will help if you know the names of a few commonly uh, affecting viruses. Okay. Now, which body defense can help to reduce your risk of getting food poisoning? Okay. Okay. Another thing. Uh, why can't diabetes be transmitted? Why can't high, heart attack be uh, tra transmitted from one person to another? Why can't a scurvy be transmitted from one person to another? Do you guys, can anybody answer? Yes, good job. Genetic disease, which one is genetic? Diabetes, type one diabetes is genetic. Now there are other types of diabetes as well, right? So, but yeah, okay. The one that you have done is genetic. Uh, yes, heart attack. Now these are due to internal, these are not caused by those pathogens, right? These are due to some problem with the internal system of the body itself. You know, especially uh, and scurvy. What is a scurvy? Who will tell me? Who? What is a scurvy? 
scurvy is caused by deficiency of vitamin C. Good job. Hala, good job. I'm happy that you remember it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, which body defense can help to reduce your risk of getting food poisoning? Food poisoning. A, blood clotting. B, cilia in the respiratory passages. C, hydrochloric acid in the stomach. D, tough layer of keratin on the skin. Which of these four will help us in reducing the risk of food poisoning? Yes. Uh, let's see. Yes, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, because of course we're talking about food poisoning. So something to do with the digestive tract, some uh, immune, uh, immune system of the digestive tract, right? Which cells can destroy bacteria by phagocytosis? Goblet cells, platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells. Yes, Maruj, yes, white blood cells, D, right. Right, Amna, D, yes, okay. Uh, at which temperature range do most bacteria grow fastest? A, zero to four degrees Celsius, B, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, C, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, D, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. Now, you haven't done this precisely, but it is there in the chapter, it is there in your book, but I did not do this with you guys. And, but you can make your common sense. Use your common sense. Yeah. Most of the bacteria uh, will have 20 to 30. I think, no, I think it's 30 to 40. Mm, where did the, I think it's, Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You know, your book states that the bacteria can, uh, the best temperature for them to grow is from 10 to 48. From 10 to 48. Right? Yeah, almost 40. You can, you can, you can say that, but Okay, but so I, th so yeah, C, C option, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, okay? 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, okay. Let's move on. Oh, you know, I'm still sharing, right? Okay, I'm sorry about this. I lost my, okay. Question number five is done and then six. Which type of cells make antibodies? Bacteria, platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells? Easy. Right, right, white blood cells. Okay, let's move on. Then which can provide a child with active immunity? Breastfeeding, drinking fresh fruit juice, injection with antibodies, Vaccination with a weakened virus. Yeah, it, it okay. Uh, D, yes, D is the correct answer. Not breastfeeding, Usman. Uh, when the baby is drinking mother's milk, the baby is ingesting prepared antibodies, antibodies that are prepared within the mother's body. So for the baby, the immunity is passive. For the mother, it might be active, but for the baby, it is passive, okay? Okay, uh, no Heba, it's not breastfeeding, okay? It, it is, uh, It is vaccination with a weakened virus. Okay, D, vaccination with a weakened virus. Why is diabetes said to be an autoimmune disease? It can be treated with insulin injections. It cannot currently be cured. It is caused by infection by a virus. And it is caused by the body's immune system attacking cells in the pancreas. Uh, 
Again, why is diabetes said to be an autoimmune disease? It can be treated with insulin injections. It cannot currently be cured. It is caused by infection by a virus. It is caused by the body's immune system attacking cells in the pancreas. Yes, it is. Yes, it is D because it is attacked by the antibodies. Right, Sadaslam, did you understand? It is called autoimmune because the antibodies of the, of the host are uh, attacking the cells of the host itself, right? So therefore it's called autoimmune. Okay, what are antibodies? Cells that attack and kill pathogens, chemicals produced by lymphocytes that help to destroy pathogens, C, drugs that can be taken to help to cure bacterial infections, D, molecules on the surfaces of pathogens that are recognized as foreign by cells of the immune system. Yes. What's the answer? Yes. The answer is B. Yes. Sada yes. But Yusra, no, not C. B. Okay. Fatma, B. Yes, B. Okay, let's move on. Question number 10. Which type of blood cell forms memory cells following an infection? A, lymphocytes, B, phagocytes, C, platelets, D, red blood cells. Yes, lymphocytes. Memory, memory cells are a type of lymphocytes. Yes, good job. Good job, Lubna Siddiqui. Good job. Then, okay, this is a long question, like a structured question. Let's do this. Polio is a serious viral disease that can be fatal and that often leaves an infected person with permanent paralysis. The World Health Organization is using a vaccination campaign to try to eradicate polio. Polio has already been eradicated in most countries, but there are still some places where children are at risk from the disease. Polio vaccinations are normally given in two phases, a first vaccination and then a booster vaccination several weeks later. The vaccine contains weakened polio viruses. It contains weakened polio viruses. Figure 4.1 shows the concentration of antibody in the blood of a baby after the first vaccination and after the booster vaccination. Now, part one. Explain why there is delay between the time of the first administration of vaccine and the first appearance of polio antibodies in the blood. Uh, incubation period, incubation, no, no, the question is asking, explain the reason behind the delay between the time of the vaccination, the first administration of vaccine and the appearance of antibodies in the blood. Like, can you see the arrow showing the first vaccine and then the antibodies concentration reached its highest on? around like 18 to 19th day. So why did it take so many days, 18 to 19th day? That's when the concentration of antibody in the blood reached highest. What took so long? Yes, Zen, why are you asking how many questions are left? Uh, it, ta it takes time for the lymphocytes to make antibodies. Yes, exactly. It takes time for the lymphocytes to uh, recognize, I mean, be activated by the antigen and then to um, uh, mu mu multiply and then make clones and then for those clones to produce enough antibodies. So all of this process takes time. Right. So it takes time. The it, it is delayed the first time. Now, second part, describe two ways in which the secondary response differs from the primary response. Two ways, and it carries two marks. So you have to give two differences. Right, okay, so give me two differences. Yes, takes time to be stimulated, takes time to produce immunity. Yes, Lubna, you're close, but if you can be more uh, specific, what does 69 mean? Memory cells. Uh, see, the way, the way you have to write is, 
you have to write give two differences the first difference is that the secondary response is immediate the day you give vaccine that very day that very same day the person is having the highest concentration of the antibody so you can we can very well see that secondary response is immediate you have to be more specific you will say that on the day of vaccination the concentration of antibody reached its peak right that is the number one difference the second difference is that the final concentration of antibody is is way higher is more than even the double the concentration the highest concentration uh in uh, in the primary response compared to the co uh, concentration of antibodies in the primary response so the total concentration of antibody is way higher in secondary response and the first difference was that secondary response is immediate okay as compared to the primary response in which it took you know 10 to 18 days to develop antibodies right okay then okay let's move on to the okay explain the reasons for the differences you have described in your answer to part 2 so these differences that you have described now explain the reason why do you think secondary response was immediate and why do you think the final concentration was so high right right i'm waiting are you guys waiting for the questions to be over you don't have to wait if you're you know you're free what is secondary response uh secondary response is okay secondary response was the response was the response to the booster vaccination okay now we did not talk about the booster vaccination before now booster vaccination is just that you know these memory cells they don't stay activated for life okay their activation dims down or it fades away with the passage of time so in order to activate them again okay another antigen exposure is given like another booster vaccination that's called booster vaccination that results in those lymphocytes getting activated again and therefore producing antibodies even more than before and in a better way than before so that's called a booster vaccination okay so that's what they mean to say that that's what they mean by secondary response secondary response is the response to booster vaccination okay and the memory cells remember which antibody to produce and are already prepared the very good aisha nadim yes that's explanation of the immediate response because secondary response uh, takes time the antibodies are already produced secondary response does not take time that's what we are saying primary response takes time the secondary response is immediate antibodies give immediate protection okay and the reason why the final concentration of antibodies is so much higher in the secondary response is that the memory cells are um, uh, memory cells secrete and they produce uh, more antibodies even better than the first time stimulation okay because um, because their their stimulation fades away with time and when we stimulate them the second time they produce even better antibodies i mean even more antibodies the concentration is even higher right aisha nadim yes good job you did a good job aisha in answering this question body is already immune to the disease okay okay then explain no okay part b the who collects data from every country about the number of confirmed cases of polio table 4.1 shows the number of cases of polio and the percentage of children who were immunized in 10 countries in the first 11 months of 2013 okay this is the table okay and then we will move on to the questions related to this table and i will show you the table again describe the relationship between 
the percentage of children immunized and the number of polio cases. So you have to find out the relationship between the percentage of children immunized and the number of polio cases. Now let's look at let's look at it. So you can see that the top one, two, three, four, five, the top five countries had no cases of polio at all in 2013. And then Kenya had 14, the Nigeria 52, Somalia 184, Syria 13. And does this have anything to do with the percentage? Does this have anything to do with their percentages? Do you see any pattern? Can you make out any pattern? What is it? Any suggestions? Yes, Atika, good observation. More percentage, less cases. Yes, Lubna Siddiqui, yes, that is also a good way of, of stating it. The lower the percentage of immunized children, the more the cases, right? Right. Uh, once the people immunize, the lower case, low percentage. Yes, okay. But other than this high percentage, low number of cases, and vice versa, can you can you uh, pay a greater attention? Can you give me specific? Is there any specific cutoff? Can you give me a cutoff? Like how much around how much immunization should be there? What should be the range of that percentage range of immunity to have zero cases? Right, more than 95, are you sure? Can you see 90? Yeah, from 99 to 90, right? So if I wanna give a range, I can say that, okay, the percentage of immunity should be at least above 90% for the cases to be zero. Can I say that? Right, right, yes. So yes, I, I wanted you to, to appreciate that. So the percentage should be at least above 90% for the cases to be zero. And as the percentage of immunity decreases below 90, the number of cases increases significantly. Now, which country has the lowest uh, percentage? It is Somalia, right? And which country has the highest number of cases? It is the same, Somalia, right? So it, there is a, a direct correlation, right? Yes. What if the percentage is 100, then good. Of course, they, they won't have any cases. Good for them. Okay, part one. I'm sorry, part one we have already answered. Part two, suggest why, even though 5% of children in Bangladesh were not immunized, there were no cases of polio. Even though 5% of children in Bangladesh were not immunized, there were no cases of polio. Now looking back at Bangladesh, 95% was immunized. Only 5% was not. So what will you say? Good job, Sara, but, but yes, Ajwa, good job, herd immunity. Right, Aisha, good job. I'm so happy to hear this from you guys. Yes, herd immunity, because the immune people will act as buffers. So only 5% people are available for the virus to breed, which is not enough for it to be passed on because of the immune people, because those infected people will be surrounded by immune people. And those immune people will, won't pass on, right? Yes, good job, Amina. Yes, yesterday's diagram. Yes, good job. Okay, then move on, part C. There is no cure for polio, but some infectious diseases such as rabies can be treated by giving an infected person antibodies that have been produced in another organism. This provides passive immunity. Part one, explain why passive immunity does not la lo last as long as the type of immunity provided by a vaccination using weakened viruses. This is just an indirect, twisted way of asking the same old question. Right. Yes, I wish to. I, I, I wish as well, Atika. I'm with you. Yeah, this is another way of asking that why is active immunity 
uh, short term and sorry active immunity long term and passive immunity short term because so we will talk about uh, the antibodies being broken down eventually okay antibodies will be broken down and so as soon as the antibodies le level goes down the person loses the immunity and in active immunity the person's memory cells are activated and so because of the memory cells he can produce antibodies whenever required and so he has long time inshallah inshallah may allah help you yes yes we muslims should come forward and we should work on this yes inshallah okay next part state one way other than an injection of antibodies that a young child can be given passive immunity this is so easy breast milk right breast milk breastfeeding okay a few mcqs yes okay okay a few mcqs let me okay we are almost at 9 9 13 just a few questions here and i will inshallah stop exactly at 9 15 9 16 because i wasted one minute in the in the beginning okay what is the function of lymphocytes in the blood a antibody production b blood clotting c phagocytosis d transport of hormones what is the function of lymphocytes yes oh sorry what am i doing yes yes okay let's move on now by the way this i got from save my exams uh, i can for forward it to you guys if we are not able to finish this which part of a pathogen is recognized by the immune system a active site b antibiotic c antibody d antigen yeah these are easy yes good job okay let's move on when a tissue from a man is grafted onto a woman it may be rejected by the woman's body what is the main cause of this rejection a antibody production b phagocytosis c the action of antibiotics d the presence of a y chromosome what no <laughs> see you guys got tricked just because it's between man and woman so you thought it has to do with y chromosome yeah they tricked you no lubna no not b you mean to say phagocytosis no same thing it has to do with antigen antibody this is antigen antibody rejection is again antibodies attacking antigen so it is a when irrespective of man or woman whatever as long as the antigens are different antibodies will recognize them as non-self as foreigner as outsider and will start producing antibodies lymphocytes will start producing antibodies right so it is a it is antibody production okay Question number four, the antibodies that give immunity to a disease can be acquired in the following different ways. Feeding on breast milk, infection by disease, vaccination. Which of these gives active immunity? Feeding on breast milk, no. Infection by disease, yes. Vaccination, yes. So two and three, part C, right? C, C option is correct. Okay, which row describes the features of passive immunity? Antibodies made. Yes or no? Passive immunity. Which row describes the features of no? Involves memory cells? Passive immunity. No. Effective period. Short term or long term? Short term. So it's A. Okay. What happens when a child is vaccinated against tuberculosis? It's a vaccine. I cannot remember if tuberculosis is... Uh, yeah but but if it is a vaccine i told you vaccines you will consider it to be weakened uh, or dead pathogen so it will trigger uh, active immunity so active and production of memory cells yes so option b okay seven the diagram shows some parts of the blood of a mammal which part would contain the breakdown products of bacterial cells now d look like platelets platelet has nothing to do uh, uh they are i mean the bacterial uh, cells won't be inside the breakdown products won't be inside the platelets c is a red blood cell uh, its job is to transport oxygen b is a lymphocyte 
okay it will produce antibodies but a is the only cell that will take in the bacteria inside it and then release the digestive enzymes and then the breakdown products uh, will be digested and their leftovers might be found within the cell. So it's A because A is a macrophage, it's a phagocyte. Which are both chemical barriers? Okay, it's 917. I will post this in the group and you guys can do it. If you find any problem, you can ask me. I know, I know you guys are participating so well and even I'm enjoying, but we have restriction on time. Uh, 